If you meet one of these women, run the other way. Don't do it. Don't deal with it. Avoid these types of women. My name is Stefan Laboustier, a.k.a. Stefan Speaks. Back for another dating and relationship advice video. Today's video is for the men. And we're talking about the seven types of women to avoid dating. Before we begin, as always, be sure to like the video, share it, subscribe to this channel, and hit that notification button so you can be made aware every time I drop a new video, all right? So earlier, previously, I did a video on the seven types of men to avoid dating, and I told y'all I'm going to come back with the seven types of women to avoid dating. The reality is that as much as some people want to feel like the world is just filled with bad men and good women, no. There are women who are very problematic. There are women who can be a huge problem if you try to establish a relationship with them. Um, and so I want to start to identify some of these women. Now, again, as I tell the women in, in their videos, everything I'm about to lay out for you is something that you should address properly first. In most cases, because sometimes we don't have a clear view of what's really going on. Sometimes our perceptions of someone isn't completely accurate. And, and we're jumping to conclusions too early with limited information and data. So it's always good to uh, fully address the issue. And then if it cannot be corrected, all right, or removed altogether, if necessary or needed, now we know they need to be the ones that be, are removed and, and, and we move on from there. So let's just get right to it. Seven types of women to avoid dating. Woman number one, Miss is beautiful but brings nothing to the table. Now, listen, I want to make clear, because I think when people hear that, they are automatically think, oh, yes, like you shouldn't be worried about looks. Listen, I believe in attraction. I believe that to have successful relationships, you need to have physical attraction. But I do not believe in getting so locked in or blinded by that attraction or by that woman's looks that you overlook the fact that there is no other value here in this woman. Now, that woman may be at a point in her life where she has not built up that value and maybe she'll one day become a, a woman with great substance. But the point is, right now, you don't need to be dating her. And, and you need to recognize does she add to your life or does she subtract from your life? Because some women will come in and become a liability, a headache. They will drain you. They will destroy you. They will derail you from your purpose, from your mission, from the things you need to be doing as a man. While others will uplift, inspire, and, and, and create a better positive environment for you as a man, for your growth, for your purpose to be accomplished. So you got to recognize, okay, which kind of woman is this? Now, I want to also make something clear. When we say bring something to the table, one of the things that I dislike about that conversation, at least when I hear it from other people speaking it, is that they seem to focus on what is being brought to the table is finances, education, house, resources, all these things. But you have to understand, as a man, and, and for the women who are listening to this, Depending on where you are in life as a man, those aren't the things you need from her at the table. So what I'm saying is, if you're a man who's accomplished, all right, you already have the finances, you already have the resources, you already have the tools for greater success, you need a woman who can bring you peace. You need a woman who knows how to help you relax. You need a woman who can pour into you, believe in you, help you in your vision, see things, catch the blind spots that maybe you can't catch. So she has great vision, all right? She may not have her own business. She may not be doing certain things, but she may have a specific set of skills that when added to you, enhances you and enhances the overall relationship. So when I say bring something to the table, I mean value that will enhance the relationship between you and that woman. Again, she becomes a plus, not a minus. And so please understand that it's not always going to be about her money, her education, all these things. And again, for the women listening, if you're going for a man who's successful, then those other things, your feminine energy, your positivity, your love, your support, these things become a higher priority than all the other stuff, the, all the other material things that people have, are possessing and think sh should be what gives them value in a relationship. All right? So again, avoid the woman who's beautiful but brings nothing else to the table. She is a minus, not a positive. A liability, not an asset.
Second woman to avoid dating is Mrs. Bad Attitude. Now, this probably goes without saying, all right? But I'm going to say it because I see so many men, again, get blinded by her looks, maybe get blinded by her resources, her money, depending on the type of man you are and where you are in life, and you overlook the bad attitude. And some of y'all overlook the bad attitude because you grew up around bad attitudes or you yourself have a bad attitude. You essentially have dysfunction within you, so you tolerate dysfunction around you. But I'm going to tell you right now, a woman with a bad attitude is going to destroy you. You may be able to tolerate it now. You might even find it cute and sexy in the moment. But I'm telling you, in the long run, it is going to drain the hell out of you. You are not going to be able to tolerate this woman, and you guys are going to start to have a battle. At some point, that attitude becomes a huge liability. As we mentioned, number one, you don't want to align yourself with liabilities, negative energy, attitudes, overly pessimistic. These are problems. These are things that she needs to address. And again, again, in fairness, and I always say it to the women, you see a woman with a bad attitude, I'm not saying one minute you just got to run. If you, if you notice great things about this woman, but there's one issue where her attitude keeps an adjustment, nothing wrong with having a conversation about that and being straight up. But I'm going to tell you, the, the woman who can acknowledge, you know what, okay, I see what you're saying and I'm willing to fix that, okay, you can work with that. But I'm going to tell you, a lot of women will then deflect, will not take any responsibility, will say, well, no, you're the problem or you're not strong enough to deal with my attitude. No, let her go. Don't, don't even bother. Don't even deal with it. Because if she cannot take constructive, don't attack her about it, don't speak down to her about it, just be loving and, and straightforward as a man about it. And if she can't take constructive love and criticism in a way that's going to help you guys have a potentially better relationship or a better relationship if you guys were to potentially get together, then that's not a woman you should even bother with. All right? So that's another woman, Mrs. Bad Attitude. All right? That's a woman to avoid dating. Now we get to number three on the list. The third woman to avoid dating is Mrs. Baby Daddy Drama. Now... Notice I said baby daddy drama and not Mrs. Single Mother. I know there's a lot of videos and a lot of men out there who believe do not waste your time with a single mother, do not entertain a single mother. I, I honestly, wholeheartedly, and genuinely do not believe that is the best approach to take. I do not believe every situation is the same. I understand the arguments being made about why men should not entertain a single mother. But I would counter that by saying, listen, you have to look deeper into the situation to understand what's actually going on here. And I'm big on connection. And so I, you could have a situation where you as a man meet a woman and you experience this amazing connection with her. The last thing I would want you to do is to dismiss her or devalue her because she has a child already. However, I would not want you to walk into a war zone of a woman who has constant baby daddy drama and she has not cleaned up that mess. This is a situation where, yes, you don't need to engage right now. You can, you can say to this woman, hey, listen, when you get that together, when you fix that, then we can talk about things. But until then, no, because... The last thing you want is to walk into a situation where now you're going to have to battle this negative influence of her baby's father that, again, and, and these situations in many of them, I'm not going to say, oh, I don't know all situations, but many of them can be resolved with the proper approach, but a lot of people don't know how to take the proper approach. But anyways, you don't want to walk into where now you got to deal with the negativity of this outside influence, the baby's father. You have to deal with the negativity that comes from their interaction with each other that now gets poured over into you. You have to deal with the negativity that that pours into the child of to these two, these two people. This is too much. This is too much. And you're not Superman. You can't just fix that situation. You can't come in and make everything right. You've got to understand that this is something that she needs to handle on her own. So on one side, no, I do not want you to simply ignore a woman right off the bat because she has kids. I know some of you don't care and will still do it. That's your choice as a man. But I'm telling you, as someone who has seen so many different relationships, and I've seen men who have embraced a woman with kids who are the happiest they've ever been, all right? And, and, and had they simply let her go because she had a child by somebody else, 
then they would have missed out on this great value they have now in their life, this blessing they're experiencing. But again, those men did not walk into craziness. Those men got with a woman who had her situation in order, who, who they were able to now tra peacefully transition into him now being in their lives and, and adding to the whole dynamic and the blended family. So it can work. It can work. I'm not saying it's likely or it always does, but it can work. So don't, don't run away automatically from them. But if there's baby daddy drama, that's a hell no. You don't, you don't deal with that. All right, so now let's talk about number four. And the women might hate me for this one. <laughs> they might already hate me from the other ones, but who cares? I mean, I got to tell you what the truth is. I got to be honest with y'all, all right? Number four is Mrs. Look Shouldn't Matter. Hear me out. Hear me out, my friend. All right. What I'm saying to you is this. First caveat is if you are a man who feels that looks should not matter, then you're good to go. Then this, this woman is not someone for you to avoid because clearly you two are on the same page. But if you're a man who values the physical, who values the appearance, who values physical attraction, to get with a woman who says, look, should it matter? And of course, we got to dive deeper and I'll explain about the deeper part. If, if she qualifies as what I'm going to explain here, then you're headed for trouble in the sense that I've seen so many relationships where here you have a man who, who's all about looking good, who wants to keep himself up and wants his woman to keep herself up. But her mentality is, look, should it matter? And because look, should it matter, I should not be held to a standard of keeping myself up. I should not be pressed about how I need to look for you. You should love me regardless. And the problem is, if that doesn't truly work for you, you are setting yourself up for disaster. And I've seen these relationships go left. And unfortunately, in society, because people are shamed, men and women, for wanting physical attraction in their relationship or wanting their partner to maintain themselves physically, all right, many people don't speak up about it. Many people act like it's a different issue going on in their relationship when in reality, it's the attraction is gone. It's the attraction has faded because the other person does not believe in having to look good for their partner. And this is something that you can find out very early. And, and from what I have seen personally and through other conversations with other men, if you ask the right questions while you're in the dating process, you can find out what her mentality is on keeping herself up or if letting yourself go should be not a pro shouldn't be a problem in a relationship. And that's a huge indicator of what you're going to potentially deal with. So again, the, the, this goes back to where do you genuinely stand? If you're someone who has no problem, if your woman fully deviates from how she looks, all right, and turns into something completely different, and you're still going to be good, then okay, cool, proceed. But if you know that's a problem for you, and you know your ability to maintain a healthy relationship is going to be hindered by this, then you should not proceed in dating this woman. And please understand, there's a difference between I would not leave her if she changed physically versus I will still love and pour into her what she needs even if she changes physically. Because there are many men who, yes, do not leave their girlfriends, their wives, because she let herself go or because she's evolved into something different. However, they're not touching her the same. They're not talking to her the same. They're not treating her the same. They're not respecting her the same. You're not, you're not winning an award for staying if you're now going to not give the treatment she desires and deserves. You're not helping anything by being there out of some principle of, I wouldn't walk away for what some people would call shallow, which I dispute that, but some people would call shallow reasons, all right? But again, you're going to now mistreat them and act a fool. That defeats the whole purpose. So you have to make sure if I'm going to be okay with a woman who doesn't see a need to keep herself up in the long run or after marriage, then I have to be willing to come with the same energy whether she looks like this, like that, like that. And if I cannot maintain that energy and she is not going to want to keep herself up, y'all not a good fit. Avoid it. Keep it moving. So now we get to number five, and number five is Mrs. Too Damn Independent. <laughs> Mrs. I Don't Need a Man. Now, listen, 
technically, it's, it's nothing wrong with not needing a man. The problem is in that mentality that typically comes with someone who's very guarded, someone who has walls up, someone who has deviated from their feminine energy, all right? Because the I don't need a man mentality for many becomes a defense mechanism, all right? But going back to Mrs. Too Independent, now again, what's important here is as you as a man have to identify, one, picture yourself in a relationship with someone you truly love, okay? And when you truly love someone, most of us, if not all of us, want to be able to do for that woman. We want to pour into that relationship that is normal behavior. Many of you operate from a mindset of being with a woman that you're not really in love with, so you don't understand fully the give and take of that relationship. But when you picture being with someone you really, truly love, and I only want to encourage you to be in relationships with someone you truly love, you're truly seeing as, this is a woman I can marry or I am now married to, all right? Um, you, you will then start to understand how if she acts too independently, the same way as if you were to act too independently in a relationship, you're going to undermine the flow of love in that relationship, as so she will. And so now what happens is in relationships, we need interdependence to have success. We have to be able to rely on each other, do for each other, all these things. Independence seems cool when it's casual. Independence seems cool if you're not really into them and you're trying to find the easy way out because, okay, I got to have the responsibility of pouring into them. They can do for themselves. But if you're trying to have a successful, healthy relationship, you've got to understand the need to pour into each other. And if there's too much independence, that's going to go against that. Also understand that even if you convince yourself that I'm okay with a woman who's very independent and don't need me to do for her, I need you to be careful because at some point, she's not going to maintain this, I will do it all for myself. At some point, she will want you to step up. At some point, she will want you to take initiative. So if you think you're going to walk in this relationship and this is just going to be an easier dynamic for you because she can do it all on her own and it's wanting to be capable, of course, we want people to be capable of doing things. But if she's always doing it on her own and you become conditioned to that, now what happens, and I've seen this in so many marriages and long-term relationships, where now she becomes frustrated because you are not taking initiative. You are not stepping up. You are not lessening the burden on her back. So it actually, again, for the health of a relationship, it is better to have a dynamic where that's already established early on. And if she's too independent, again, many times that is a sign of a deeper issue. And I'm saying in regards to there's a wall up. There's an idea that I cannot rely on a man. I cannot depend on a man. So on the surface, it may seem cool. It may seem acceptable, but it can be the exact poison that destroys the relationship. So you would want to at least address it. Again, I'm not, some women have become so conditioned to being independent that even when they meet a man who loves, and want, loves them and wants to pour into them, it's a struggle to transition. So that's why I don't want to sit there and say, the minute you recognize she's very independent, just cut her off and don't date her. Address it. But if she's unwilling to embrace the need for interdependence, as you should as well, then there's no point in continuing dating. Leave it alone because you're only headed for disaster. So now let's get to number six. So now let's get to number six. She doesn't know how to listen. Now, this should be an easy one, but I think here's a tip that I need you to be aware of. It's going to really help you identify a woman who is listening to you. Because I think sometimes, again, as men, it's very easy to get blinded in, man, this is a great woman. She looks good. She has this. She has that. But you're not realizing that the flow of conversation and communication is off and that her ability to actually listen to you is not present. So pay attention to this one thing. And I'm not going to say this is a foolproof way, but it has been pretty on point. All right. And that is when you're talking to a woman, pay attention to how often or if she jumps in, over talks you in the conversation. If she's always jumping in without even letting you finish your statement, that is a problem. That is a red flag. I have noticed in my own experiences and even ex like paying attention to other people interact where you have this woman, it's almost like 
She's hearing the words coming out of your mouth, but she's just waiting for her chance to speak. This is very, this is going to be a problem in a relationship because again, if she is unwilling or unable to listen to you, it could be a sign of a lack of respect. All right. It could be a sign of her just being a poor communicator. Um, it could be a sign of, again, her trying to always be uh, controlling of a situation. All those three things are issues that have to be addressed because if they continue on, they will be a big problem in the relationship, especially if it's a lack of respect. Because typically, when women have a very high respect for a man, they're much more willing to sit and listen, typically. But again, there's, there's other things that can happen that make it a struggle for her to just listen in that moment. There are other things that could be triggering her. And again, that speaks to maybe some unresolved issues. Either way, the point is when you identify that she does not listen, not simply do as you say listen, but listen to you. Be able to understand what you're conveying to her, all right, and not get in her own head. When she can't do that, you need to avoid dating her because you're only going to set yourself up for a bad relationship if you proceed with this woman. And then last but not least on this list of types of women to avoid dating, Mrs. Never Takes Any Accountability. Now, I know some of y'all men are saying no woman takes accountability. So <laughs> I, I, I already feel what you're saying. But listen, listen, there are some women who can take accountability out there. All right. And it's very important that, again, this is something that's established or addressed early on. Even if you believe that the majority of women struggle to take accountability, the point is that if she is truly into you, if she's truly serious about having a healthy relationship and you properly address the issue, because again, we don't just cut them off, we address the issue, then she will be willing to work on that. She'll be willing to make adjustments. But again, I, I feel the need, I have to say this, even though we're talking about women to avoid dating, understand that if you want her to take accountability, you have to be a man who takes accountability too. You have to lead by example in that area. You have to show that you can admit when you're wrong. When you can establish that, if she cannot now step up and match that energy by taking accountability when she's wrong, now you know without a doubt you cannot proceed with this woman. But when you set that example and now she embraces following that and doing the same, now we have a winner here. Now we have someone we can move forward with and establish a healthy relationship. Now, granted, taking accountability, it may take time in the dating process to fully evaluate this. But if you simply talk about previous relationships or other situations, pay attention to, to how she takes accountability in any area of her life. Is everything always about everyone or anything else? Or does she ever talk about how, yeah, you know what, I could have done this better, or this is what I realized? And, and again, if you notice she's not taking accountability, point that out in the other situations. See how she handles that. And if she is willing to now handle that better or wake up to the reality that she has to hold herself accountable, now we can move forward and have something healthy going on. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here. And I'll see you there. Because again, you're choosing her at your, not necessarily your worst, but at your lower level self. And then when you do get to a more successful place, there's a very good possibility you don't want her anymore.